All right. So welcome, Dennis, to Escape the Rat Race Radio. How are you today? Good, Christian. Greetings from LA today. I know. I can see the sun shining in on your face there. And um, I, I guess you're kind of busy traveling around the world as you normally are. Is that right? Seven meetings today. I was in San Francisco filming. I'm flying to Hong Kong tonight. Tomorrow I'm going to be in Malaysia with the king and queen. And then I have seven other countries in the next month. Well, so I, I have escaped the corporate world. <laughs> the job. One, one rat race to another, as, as business owners often say, right? But at least you're in control and you have the choice. Yep. Yeah. So, Dennis, for our listeners today who perhaps haven't had the good fortune of coming across you before online, would you mind just giving a brief summary, summary of who you are and, and why you do what you do? I've been a data and ads and math analytics geek for the last 20 something years. I used to compete in math contests. I was one of those Asians that you didn't like that would take the test and then run off. And I thought that grades were everything. I was a believer in the system and I was a good employee when I started off at like American Airlines and Yahoo. I was an early employee and I found after a while that I didn't like going to meetings. And I didn't like having my schedule confined. And I found that I liked to travel. And the irony of working for the airline and not being able to travel to all the places was as ironic as my friends who ran marketing at the golf companies, but they didn't play much golf. And it wasn't until I discovered entrepreneurship the hard way that I was able to travel. I was able to delegate. I was able to outsource. I used to have so many meetings, Christian, that and you, a lot of you guys listening probably have the same thing. Your calendar is from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. is completely full, right? Mm -hmm. And then you talk to other people saying, how many meetings do you have? Oh, I have five meetings. Oh, yeah, I have six meetings and a conference call with London. And I thought, this is crazy. I can't get any work done. I can't move up. I can't spend time with friends who say, hey, let's go to London, right? There's this thing going on in London. Like, well, I can't. I've, I only have whatever, 10 vacation days per year. And I heard all these people talking about entrepreneurship but I didn't see how that was relevant to me because it looked like it cost money. It looked like it was just not something I could pull off. And so I started Blitz Metrics to be able to mentor young adults to be able to start their own businesses, even while they're still in school or have a job or don't have any kind of experience. And we do it completely free, no charge, because the money that we made off of our clients, off of like Nike and the Golden State Warriors or Quiznos, we've we've turned around and spent millions of dollars to build training programs for young adults and to be able to hire hundreds of people in the Philippines, for example, to be virtual assistants. And I'm just glad that we're able to, in a strange way, be like a Peter Pan because we lose an increasing amount of money every year training up other people. But that's the, that's the kind of mentorship and training that we just don't see in the marketplace, but we believe that we need to put out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're certainly talking to aspiring entrepreneurs today, Dennis. What's your definition of an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is someone who has a vision that's bigger than them. And that can be ideally a way that you monetize. So, so what is it that drives an entrepreneur? Hopefully it's not themselves. It's not their lifestyle or their money. Then that's an employee. And you can get pretty far as an employee. I think the average Facebook employee makes $140,000 as a base salary. And there's some Google employees that make over a million dollars a year, right? Like Paul Buchheit, who's the founder of Gmail, he makes over a million dollars a year, but he's a special employee. But an entrepreneur has to have, the difference is they have to have that special passion that goes beyond them. They, there's a cause or a mission or something they believe in that there's a bigger problem they want to solve. And that problem is big enough that someone else is willing to pay money. In fact, Lots of people are willing to pay money, and so they crowdsource that. I'm a software entrepreneur, so I like building software that maybe, if Christian, if you wanted to build some social analytics software, like let's say you're a Nike, it would cost you maybe 2 or $3 million to build. But if you pay us $100,000 and we can get 30 other companies to each pay us $100,000, then we're pulling in $3 million, and it's much less than the cost of what it would take for you to build. And I think entrepreneurship is the, the same thing in, in any kind of area. Let's say that you're a consultant. You have some kind of knowledge. You've solved some problem at your cost. And someone else will pay you a fraction of that cost to be able to get the full benefit of what you've been through. And then if you sell that to 100 people, let's say there's something that's cost you 10 years of your life to figure out. And you sell it for $100 an hour. That's a great deal, isn't it? Mm-hmm. 
let's say there's a product like my buddy Josh, he built this product, Snow Teeth Whitening, right? He spent several million dollars investing in it. And now he's got Floyd Mayweather and Rob Gronkowski and the Kardashians talking about how awesome snow is. And you can buy this. For, I think it's one hundred forty nine dollars. I have no equity stake. I'm a mm -hmm. I'm a user. You know, I, I believe in him. And he, he's he's now sold eight figures of this per month. And he's now on to nine figures selling teeth whitening, be, not because he's trying to make money and fuel his lifestyle. He's already got all the exotic cars and mansions and that kind of thing. But because he's he solved the problem of yellow teeth. And he's and, and and he spent millions of dollars building this product, and now he's able to invest millions of dollars back into his marketing machine. Yeah, and again, people listening right now, Dennis, they most likely have still got one foot in the corporate world, or certainly in a job, and one foot in starting yeah. their new business. So they're overwhelmed. You know, time is yeah. of a premium, and they maybe hear of these successful people like you've just mentioned there. You know, mentioning millions of dollars, but. At the beginning, when at what point do you change from being an employee to becoming an entrepreneur? What is that process in your experience of all the thousands of people you've worked with? Hang on a second. Chris. Yeah, that's like I think I lost the connection just for a second. That's okay. I'll, I'll start from the beginning. Yeah. There. yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. So, at what point, Dennis, do you? see someone changing from being an employee mindset to becoming an entrepreneur mindset and how how long a process is that and is it something someone can just learn or do you feel that people are born with this trait inside of them i think entrepreneurship is like riding a bicycle with all the weird analogies where you have to learn do and teach it so you could read books about it you can listen to podcasts like here with christian and me but that's not going to do you any good unless you start to take small action. It's not something that you're innately born with. I thought things like networking and public speaking were all just, you know, you were innately an outgoing, extroverted kind of person. No, anybody can be an entrepreneur. But if you're already working another job and you also want to be a full-time entrepreneur, I don't believe it's the kind of thing, like, look, I'm a big fan of Gary Vaynerchuk and other people that talk about hustling and trying to do two jobs at the same time. I believe that results in burnout. So my strategy, which has worked for me and worked for other people in my network, might not – it'll probably work for you, but you know, everyone's got different strokes. Some people, they just like to hustle and suffer and demonstrate to others that they have this pain. And good for you. If, that, if that's your product, then, then that's what you're going to get. But I believe that keep, you should keep your job. And until you're making more money off of your other venture than your job, don't quit. Because I've seen people quit a good job and then they're broke, they can't pay their bills, they get in all kinds of trouble because they thought that, well, within 30 days, I'm going to make a six-figure business like this consultant told me. I bought his course. He said in 30 days I could – yeah, um, usually it takes 10 times longer than you think. So if you think 30 days, it's probably 300 days. Yeah. But if it's yeah. worth it, if it's something that's meaningful to you, are you willing to wait 300 days? Totally, it's worth it, right? Mm -hmm. Like when I left Yahoo, I didn't just leave Yahoo. I was doing consulting on the side. A lot of us have these big visions and dreams of how we want to go from today to Elon Musk in a year. Well, guess what? Before you sell a product, you, you build consulting around it. You build a service. You test it. You want to eliminate as much risk in that because entrepreneurship is so incredibly risky. So if you're working your day job and that's eight hours – can you spend two hours a day? So maybe watch a little less TV. Maybe, you know, spend a little less time goofing off. Can you spend two hours a day selling consulting services around something that you already know how to do? Right? That doesn't take you any money. You don't have to invest $3 million to, to figure out all the teeth whitening and the IP around building a product like this and set up manufacturing in China. Like, you don't have to do any of that. You just sell your time. You can, you can create a gig on Fiverr, you can build a website and sell consulting. You can build a ClickFunnels funnel and sell an info product or sell coaching. You can, there's all these different places you can sell your time, right? Yeah. I mean, I, you go to blitzmetrics.com slash power hour and buy an hour with me for $1,500. It, it, it was $100 maybe 10 years ago and it's gone up every year, right? So maybe you start at $100. Maybe you start with some kind of gig 
that you sell for $500, right? Start low because you need to build the base of having a few customers. I'll give you another example. So my friend Jeremy Ryan Slate, he's a big podcaster. Just a couple hours ago, he released his speaker reel. And it's this glamorous speaker reel of him interviewing Grant Cardone and Tony Robbins and all these other sorts of people, right? Because he really has maximized his lifestyle and he really does have all, all the things behind it to prove it. And that speaker reel was made by us. I think we charged him $150 for that. We probably should have charged him $600 because of all the editing that went into it and the full production, right? You could see it on his LinkedIn and on his Facebook. All these people are saying, holy moly, who made that for you? That was amazing, right? And the reason why we charged $150 was we knew that if we gave Jeremy some something that he would just absolutely say, this is incredible, the value of him talking about that to everyone else is so high. I couldn't even pay Jeremy. Like, how much would it cost for me to pay Jeremy Ryan Slate to, to post on LinkedIn and Facebook about how awesome our services are? I'd, ha I'd have to pay him a couple thousand dollars. Instead, he paid me $150. Is, mm -hmm. there, is, there, is there something, some service you can offer, some kind of uh, consulting, some sort of value that you can drive, that you can sell for something insanely cheap, not to anybody, but to somebody who, when they become what we call your lighthouse customer, So I, I talk about the teeth whitening. I just happen to have this next to me. I have lots of products next to me. But to have, like, how much is it worth to have Floyd Mayweather, who's an incredible boxer, talk about how this is the product that he uses? Can't put right? a price on it, can you? Yeah, yeah. 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 And that, that's been the secret I've seen for entrepreneurs in the last five years is if you have to give it away for free for your first three or four customers, as long as you have that, up front, the agreement that you're going to interview them, you're going to talk about it, they're going to be a great customer for you, it's a win-win because you also say to them, oh, and the reason why we're giving it to you for so cheap is because we want you to be a lighthouse customer of ours. We want, like, if we're not successful, then we're not going to be able to talk about it. So now you're in the same, you have the, your goals are aligned and they, they know that you have an incentive to do a good job for them. So how are they not going to say yes to that? Yeah. Yeah. So for anyone listening now, I hope you're really, really taking this on board. And Dennis, we had Ezra uh, on as a guest just a few months ago. And I know you're a good buddy with Ezra. And he was echoing yeah. the same kind of thing about this consultancy. You know, just take what you already yeah. have. You might not enjoy your job, but you've got skills and you've got, you know, time that you've invested to learn something that other people would pay you money for. So, um, you know, use that. Yeah. Um, so I think it leads kind of nicely into what, as what you were saying just there, Dennis. Obviously, you're known as you know being one of the world's key masters at Facebook advertising, online branding, and I'd really like to help our listeners today understand where they should begin with digital marketing. Now, Facebook advertising is is obviously the kind of buzzword out there, but. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people and you obviously working with people every single day who yeah. are having various degrees of success with Facebook marketing. So yeah. why is it super difficult for some people and why have some people got a strategy that they follow, which if they give it time will work mm -hmm. for them? Well, you just answered the question, Christian, the people that are successful have a strategy. And I know that's easy to say. It's like Warren Buffett saying the secret to making Money is picking stocks that are undervalued. Okay, yeah, well, I need to find the undervalued stocks first. It's this. So if I've got, let's see if I have, here it is. Look, this is your device to making lots of money. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you've got some fancy podcasting equipment, and I can tell you're filming through a DSLR or something because of the You know the what? Blur. It's, yeah. it's actually uh, Skype. It's just the blur background. Doing? And so for anyone listening on the podcast right now, <laughs> check out the video on the Skate Rat Race website because me and Dennis are having a video chat as well here. <laughs> and, and Dennis, okay. you held up your mobile phone. So when you say this is your money making, you know, here. it's the mobile phone, right? On Facebook? Look, yep. you see, I'm, I've got my phone open right here for you. Yep. And if I open up Facebook, yep. right? You've never seen anyone do this live on Skype before. And watch as I scroll. Here's my buddy Jeff Celentano, and here he, he runs the marketing at Lightspeed, which is Bradley's company. And he's he's just having he's okay. Can always rely on the good doctor for some last minute Halloween inspiration. This is literally the first thing that popped up. How much of the screen does this take up? The whole screen. Yeah, it does. Why? Well, let's see. Um, here's an, here's another one by Katya Higgins Photography. The very next thing. 
How much of the screen does this take up? It's the whole screen. Whole screen. Okay. But then if we scroll down to something that's an ad or some, something that someone's promoting, like this thing down here, how much of the screen does that take well, up? Well, that's like less than half probably, right? Yeah, probably about a third of the screen. This is the trouble. Like here's another one. How much of the screen does, does this image or video take up? Yeah, that's definitely a third. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason why is that when people are, are running ads, when people are selling, they fall into this mentality that that it exposes them as advertisers because they're putting it in landscape, they're self-promoting, they have a call to action, they're linking to a website. Would you agree, Christian, it's easy to identify what an ad looks like as you're scrolling? Yeah, they normally yeah. jump you out at you, don't they? You don't even have to read the, the, the mile-long paragraph of text to know it's an ad, and thus you don't read it, do you? Mm. Would you agree we're all very smart with, with very quickly identifying whether it's an ad? Absolutely. Okay. So the key is, if you want to make money on Facebook, make stuff that's not an ad. So if you're going to do the exact opposite, what are, what are the traits of something that's not an ad? You're going to have some kind of casual photo or something fun or something that you would share with your friends, right? Yeah. And it has to be entertaining and or a story, fun. A, a story of yeah. some kind. It has to be amusing. It can't look like an ad. It can't be shot in landscape. It has to be shot in portrait. So yesterday I was in San Francisco and I brought my phone with me to interview, for example, Here's my buddy who's the head of community at WeWork, right? Mm -hmm. We went to a Warriors game too after we filmed. Or maybe, you know, this is us in the studio. Or maybe it's, I can look at any of these other ones. Here's, here's Brian Fanzo, who's the host, and Jeff Hunter and me. Uh -huh. And we're doing a fun little selfie, right? Yep. And you can see that here's more, more behind the scenes. Here it is on the TV. We, this is in front of 40,000 people we did this. It was Global Marketing Day. And here we are. You can see putting putting on the on the the, the micro you know behind the scenes yep. lapel mics the cameras all this and we're just giving people a glimpse into what it looks like and this is what people want to see this mm. is not polished and produced and perfect this is showing people this is this is how you interview somebody right this yep. is the the head of social globally for Oracle and all the products within Oracle that's a multi billion dollar company. They just renamed, renamed AT&T Park into Oracle. Here we are putting on makeup and, and getting ready before we go into the studio, right? Is this something you would see in an ad? Not very often. No, but we're just showing what's going on in our daily lives. Mm. We're just, there, there's lots of things that you might think are that, – that you and I, Christian, and you guys listening – you would, you would think are not really important. You would think are mundane. You think like, oh, everybody knows how to do that. But no, they don't. So when you show little parts of your life, people are like, wow, what are they doing? For example, I was on an airplane one time and I was making some Facebook ads using the Southwest Wi-Fi, which is sometimes good and sometimes not good. And, and somebody said, some snoopy neighbor next to me said, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm just adjusting some Google ads. For Quiznos, it's really easy. I gotta, you know, prepare this report and whatever. And and this person said, "Holy moly!" Well, uh, and, and like, how does that work? And I started explaining it and stuff that I took for granted. Yeah, the stuff that he said, my goodness, that is mind blowing, right? And I guarantee you, the stuff that you think is like, oh, that's so obvious, everybody knows it. That's the stuff people will pay you for. When you've done something over and over again for years, you do not have to be world, world class. You don't have to be, be the very best in the world. And that's the stuff. If you just share those micro moments, you put that out there on Facebook, put it out there on LinkedIn, and then here's the secret, Christian. You put it out there for $1 a day. Mm. Okay. So you can put that out there on LinkedIn and Facebook and literally spend a dollar a day. Now, LinkedIn, you have to set a $10 a day budget, so you set your bid really low, like $2 a click. And Facebook, you can boost a post from your business page, which can be your public figure page, which is your name, yep. or your company page, right? Your agency or whatever it is, so and so consulting inc. What you do is you create a Facebook business page, not your profile. The mm -hmm. profile is what you log in with. It's your username. You have friends on your profile. But you create a page that's called Christian Rodwell. Mm -hmm. It looks just like your profile. It has the name, has the picture, but it's a page. And the, the page type is called a public figure page, and you're posting 
these stories. So if you go to my public figure page versus you go to my Facebook profile, you're going to see similar kinds of content. Yep. You'll yep. see me interviewing these other people saying, oh my goodness, it's Brian Fanzo. He's the host. And we're also with Anton Schuchel and we're also also with the folks here at SEM Rush. And you know, hey, hey everybody, right? And they're saying, hey, right? Right here on my cell phone. Now notice, if you're holding your phone, are you holding it this way or are you holding it this way? Yeah, it's gonna be portrait, isn't it? You're holding it this way. Up so yep. notice when we were on Facebook, what what kinds of content got the got the whole screen versus got only a third of the screen? It was the the the, the videos, the the big kind of pictures of people yeah. people doing doing fun stuff. Yeah. So when you're when you're doing stuff landscape like this, you mm. only get part of the screen. It looks like an ad. Mm. When you film one minute videos or even fifteen second videos, lightweight moments about sharing your knowledge sharing, hey, I woke up this morning in downtown LA and I thought, holy moly, this is such an amazing place to be. I love, I, I'm, I have such gratitude. I'm about to go take a, a bath over a cocoon in downtown LA. It's my favorite place to go in LA. And I, and, and so when you just share moments like that, you're not selling. Did I sell anything? No, mm -hmm. but then people, oh, he's taking a bath, a cocoon. Oh. There you here, see the back of my phone. It, this this logo is Lightspeed. That's my friend Brad Lee, and this is what we use for our training systems. We lo we load up our courses in the Lightspeed, and when people see enough of us using the products and services of the companies that we work with, whether they're ours or other people, then they're naturally now now they're ready to buy. It, it, you don't even have to sell them; they're already ready to do it, right? So, so, I, so, so Dennis, if I can just 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 ask you then at this point. Because some people listening might now go, well, Dennis, you're traveling the world. You've got all these cool things. You know all these cool people. People are interested to see what you're up to. But I'm a nobody. I've got a business that nobody knows about yet. And, you know, should I just be like running ads on just what I'm doing day to day? Is that what you're yes. saying, Dennis? Yes. For a dollar a day. All of us have imposter syndrome. All of us are thinking... Oh, well, I'm not as good as, you know, Elon Musk because I'm not sending rockets out into space. But certainly, and let's just say, let, let's just say you are boring, okay? Maybe you're a, you run a funeral home. Actually, that's pretty interesting. My buddy Welton does marketing for funeral homes. But let's just say whatever you do is super boring. You're an insurance adjuster, right? Guess what? You have friends that are interesting. So you interview them. So my buddy Jeff Hunter, he runs this, he runs this, this thing. He's the savage marketer. Right, mm -hmm. and he's got a bunch of virtual assistants to do all kinds of cool stuff. So I'm interviewing him, and I'm saying, "Wow, you go to the Philippines twice a year. Tell me about that." And I'm doing that while I'm wearing his hat. So start promoting other people's stuff. Right, right? I do that all the time. All on on the plane, and by the way, not only when you're flying, but it could be just wherever you you're at a barbecue at, at someone's house, and you meet someone interesting, and they and you're like, "Wow, oh, that is so cool what you do. Can I can I interview you for one minute?" about that topic yeah. and how likely are they going to say no to one minute so what's so, what's so important about the one minute dennis is it because facebook likes it is it because people have only got an attention span of one minute and then they want to be on to the next thing what do you think the average watch time is for a video on facebook well i will i know this but only because i was just doing my research so i'm gonna say six <laughs> seconds <laughs> it is six seconds. i heard so, you say that <laughs> yeah so if you make a five minute video and the average watch time is six seconds, how many people are even gonna make it to 10 seconds or 20 seconds? Yeah, like not, yeah, not that many, right? And one minute forces you to get to the point. In one minute, you have only enough time to tell one story, to make one point, to teach one thing specifically. You're not gonna be able to download your entire CV or talk about everything that you do or all your areas of knowledge. So if, if I were to go inside your brain, Christian, and pull out the different areas of expertise, what kinds of things would I see? Oh, well, you'd see marketing, you'd see some mindsets, um, you know, personal development, helping people getting through their blocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So then if I take those and I build a topic wheel with your six primary topics, six of them that are personal and six of them that are professional. So certainly like personal development and mindset and digital marketing and PPC and podcasting. Like I'll, you, you've got a mix of these things that, that are personal and professional. I can take those and break them down even further, 
right? I can, I can take digital marketing and break that down into things like video and podcasting and email and, you know, uh, video editing. And I can take video editing and I can break that down into three or four different topics, right? Until eventually I might have a hundred different topics. And now I just make a one minute video about any one of these kinds of things. For example, I could do a one minute video saying, hey, if you're recording video or making ads on Facebook, you need to use vertical video and they need to be short. They can't open with a bumper or a sale. You need to educate people and then you remarket from that video to another video where you then sell, right? Yeah. I can do one video around that. Yeah. Lots and, this, and lots of little tips. And this is, this is another thing that I've heard you talk about, Dennis, which I think would be really valuable for our listeners is when you're doing these one minute videos, it's not just about making a sale at the end of it, is it? There's a, there's a three-step process and I, I believe awareness, engagement, conversion. Is that right? Yes. You, you've been doing your research, Christian. <laughs> and that is, those are the same three stages in the funnel that Facebook promotes. LinkedIn uses those same three stages, even Pinterest, even Snapchat. And we've actually updated it to be awareness, consideration, conversion. And do you think it is a coincidence that Google uses the exact same words of awareness to consideration to conversion? No. <laughs> do you think it's a coincidence that Twitter calls it awareness, consideration, conversion? Mm -mm. Why are the same three words for the same three stages of the funnel? Well, it's because it's just, they're trying, and it's not because it's the same engineers that work at all of them, which is true. Like the people that worked on my team at Yahoo almost 20 years ago is the same team that went and built, built the analytics at Google. And a lot of the folks who built the analytics at Google, when mm -hmm. Facebook came around, you know, fa mm -hmm. Facebook stole so many employees. Like Sheryl Sandberg was the head of sales at Google, and then she worked at Facebook. The, the head chef at Facebook, it was the chef at, at Google, right? And, and so it wasn't because these dot-com companies all share the same people. It's because the structure of driving sales mm. is actually awareness to consideration to conversion. Mm. You can retranslate that into know, like, and trust. And when you get people to buy, that's called trust. It doesn't matter what you're selling. They have to trust you. That used car, that bottled water, that teeth whitening, the professional services, the accountant, the lawyer that's there to take care of your personal injury attorney, whatever thing. Mm. It's the same mm. stages of knowing, liking, and trusting. Now, Dennis, so, that's so why we create content in those three phases. Yeah. We, we, you know, in, in marketing speak of many years, you know, gone by, it's seven touches, right? Um, is this still yeah. applicable? And how quickly can you move someone in the digital marketing world from no like to trust? It's not seven touches. It's more like 20 touches. Mm -hmm. So we have a major electronics manufacturer that you know, but I can't tell you the name that we're running campaigns for. And their head of marketing said, oh, it's seven touches. Because we're looking at how many touches we've been building. We, we've been looking at how, because we have a Black Friday sale that's coming up in the United States. We have Thanksgiving and this kind of thing. But we found that it was actually 12 to 15 touches on average. Because digital marketing, it's so easy to do research that people will research nothing. Like, like Google calls this the zero moment of truth. Or even things that are 99 cents, people will just do little bits of research. Every little decision, like you're going to go eat at a restaurant, you're going to look at Yelp. You have these micro decision moments. And because it's so easy for people to read reviews on Amazon, to be able to look at things on Google, to read blog posts. So in a, in a week, I'm going to be in Beijing. And I'm going to be able to go see the Great Wall and the Forbidden Palace and all these other pieces. And I have not chosen a tour guide. I've not chosen a hotel. I've not chosen where I'm going to eat. How am I going to decide? It, it's all those micro moments. And let me ask you, Christian. So you're in the UK. It's it, what is it? It's seven o'clock right now, PM. Oh, uh, it's it's coming up to six o'clock actually. Yeah. Six o'clock. Okay. And have you just and all the listeners here? This is a fun experiment. <laughs> have you decided where you're going to eat or what you're going to eat tonight? Uh. I actually have. So I've already taken some out of the freezer. I'm staying in tonight. Okay. It's cold outside. Oh, all right. <laughs> so you're a rarity. But let's say tomorrow morning for breakfast. Oh, have you decided what you're going to eat? No, I haven't yet. Or I have, or even like dinner tomorrow. Have you decided what you're going to eat or whether you're going to eat in or you're going to go well, out? The Friday night tomorrow. So I absolutely haven't decided yet. No, tomorrow okay. I'll decide. <laughs> but let's say Friday by noon, 
what percent of the how likely have you already decided by Friday at noon? Mm, 50 50 maybe. Right. Now, how are you going to decide between noon and dinner time? Because that's only six hours, let's say. Yeah, a few phone calls, see who's around, I guess. That would be, that would be my uh, strategy. Yeah, you want to see your mates are doing, oh, I don't know, what are you doing, right? <laughs> and, and so what happens is in, in those micro moments, people, are, their friends, you're deciding, right? Until eventually somebody says, we're going to go eat here, and that's where everyone's going to go, right? But how does that person decide? I actually did research. When I was at Yahoo, I, I did research on this. I had two PhD statistics people do research on this. Mm -hmm. And what we found is that as people are driving home or as people are surfing the internet, they come across something, right? They'll be scrolling through Instagram and they'll see like, oh, that's really cool. I want to buy that. Or I'm interested in that. And it's that that exposure. The, instead of seven touches, it's many, many touches. Mm -hmm. So if we can get in front of people, we influence them. 50% uh, of people four hours before dinner have not decided where they're going to go eat. Mm. Isn't that crazy? Mm. So if you know that's the case, how about any other purchase decision that people are making? It's going to be just like that too, Yeah. right? So if we can get in front of people and build sequences through know, like, and trust, then let's say we, if, we, if we think about know, like, and trust in these three buckets, think of it as a bun. Or, uh, the bun on the top and the bottom, and then meat. So meat is what's important, right? The meat is like where the cost is. Like that's what they. You know, I mean, you, you have a sandwich with a great bun, but it's the meat that matters. So you put most of your effort into the meat. So it's why, how, and what. So the how is where you put in. That's where you put in all your touches. That's where you're making the majority of your one-minute videos because you're sharing your expertise. Mm -hmm. The why is you're sharing stories of things that have happened that reveal what you care about, right? Reveal the values that you have. And the what is the selling. The bottom of the bun is the selling. So you move from why, how, which is where you put in your effort, to what, to the bun, that's how you succeed with digital marketing. Mm -hmm. That's how you drive sales. That's how as an entrepreneur, you get going, even if you've got a full-time job and you have to take some small steps along the way. Yeah. You start sharing your how. That's that's where the effort is. Mm. So, so that's a great big picture kind of look for someone who maybe was getting overwhelmed with with facebook advertising and and as you've just said there you believe anyone who's a small business owner you know solopreneur if they're looking to get started in digital marketing they should just start shooting these you know kind of rough and ready one minute videos yep. and follow that formula and and that's a good place to begin that's right in fact don't worry about perfection the fact that you have little mistakes along the way is great that's what makes you human that's when you're at dinner and you say something not quite the right way. Do you, do you ask your friends like, oh, can I say that story again? Oh, let me repeat that sentence again at dinner. No, you just keep talking. Yeah. So do the same thing. Yeah. And interview other people. Right. It's so much better when they're interviewing you and you're interviewing them. It's more natural. It is it's so much fun. How could we not enjoy yeah. this experience today? <laughs> um, so, Dennis, I know that you, you literally got to jump on a plane really soon. So um, so before I let you go today, um, people listening right now, they're thinking this is great. I want to get started. But, you know, they probably have more questions about Facebook. And of course, yeah. once they start logging into Ads Manager, there's a whole load of stuff that's going to oh, yeah. like go. Yeah. Oh, no. What do I do next? <laughs> so I'm sure you have got some resources. What what what, what can you point people towards Dennis on maybe your website or blitz metrics that they can go to and and that will be helpful for them just google my name Dennis you or connect with me on LinkedIn not on Facebook because I'm at the limit of 5,000 friends or if you want to be a social media consultant and you like making one minute videos you want to help other people make one minute videos you can go to smma university.com which is the social media marketing agency university smma Yep. university.com yeah i'm going to put all these links in the show notes and maybe dennis we can uh we can get a, a pdf or some kind of freebie maybe something that you've yep. got in the vaults which we can give away to our listeners yeah i'm going to give you the one minute video course because as an entrepreneur if you can't make that one minute video you can't get your message out there and if people can't understand who you are as a person and buy into you and your why they're not going to buy into your what which is your product people always buy based on the why Learn how to make one-minute videos. Learn how to to interview other people with one-minute videos. Learn how to share your knowledge via one-minute videos, mm -hmm. right? In the one-minute video course, we sell that for $25. But if you want to escape the rat race with Christian, I'm giving that to you for free. 
Oh, that's so kind. Thank you so much for that, Dennis. Now, Dennis, my final question for those people who are listening right now and they may be squashed up on the underground or in the train on their way to work, right? Stuck in that traffic jam another day heading to the office. They're feeling uninspired. They know they need to change and break free. What would be your advice for them right now? Find someone who is a friend of yours that you can interview and collect a one minute video from them. I find that I never have enough motivation all the time to always be 100% and I lean on other people. I'm always relying upon the energy of a team. I don't believe in Superman. I don't believe in superheroes. I believe in always seeking out the people that have done the thing that I want to be able to do. And I find that it works 99% of the time because they always, almost always say yes to helping you. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can I can agree with that. Thank you, Dennis. I really have enjoyed talking to you today. Safe travels. I really would love to catch up with you when you're next over in the UK. So let's keep in touch, okay? I'm in London in two weeks. Hit me up. Awesome. All right. And I'm in Phoenix right, next Eddie. week, right? So we're swapping, yeah, we're swapping, I'll miss you. <laughs> swapping places. All right. Thank you so much for being a great guest today, Dennis. Pleasure, Christian. Talk soon. 